Boland's Bakery and Boland's Mills were the centre of the area seized by the 3rd Dublin Battalion of the Irish Volunteers, led by Eamon de Valera. Perhaps only 100 men were involved in this, though de Valera disapproved of the presence of women in a fighting force. It covered a very, very large geographical area with a very, very diverse socio-economic profile, from leafy, from leafy suburbs to slums. De Valera apparently had extremely detailed plans as to what the volunteers under his command were supposed to do in this area, but the fact that there were so few involved meant that most of these plans had to be scrapped and curtailed. Again, the purpose of the volunteers in this area was to interfere with troop reinforcements coming into the city. But this time their emphasis would not be on troops coming from Kingsbridge or from the barracks in the west of Dublin. Instead, their focus would be on troops who might be arriving as reinforcements in Kingstown. In other words, troops arriving from Britain, coming across the Irish Sea in ships and being sent to Dublin. As in many other locations, outposts were established. Near Berger's Bush Barracks, for example, there were also attempts to interfere with train tracks at Westland Road, to interfere with the movement of trains into the city as well. But probably the most significant of these outposts was at Mount Street. About 15 members of the Irish Volunteers seized four locations in and around Lower Mount Street. 25 North Humberland Road comes to mind, Clan William House was another, a schoolhouse near the canal was another venue that was taken. This was an, in anticipation of troops coming up that road into the city. On the 25th of April, the 176th and 178th Infantry Battalions of the British Army arrived in Dublin, split into a number of groups, well, two groups to be precise, and entered the city through two ways. One group went through Donnybrook, and the other came straight down Northumberland Road towards Mount Street, and as they did so, they came under fire. Now, initially, as they had approached this area, some of these troops had fired into 25 Northumberland Road, where a volunteer called Michael Malone was ensconced. They received no return fire, so presumably, they felt that the building was safe. They didn't check it, however. And it should be said that the troops that arrived in Dublin um, were often quite raw and inexperienced recruits. In the rush to mobilise troops to send them across the Irish Sea, a lot of their heavier weaponry had been literally left behind at the docks, and they weren't as well armed as one might necessarily expect. But as they passed 25 Northumberland Road and made their way up towards the canal, they came under fire from the volunteers in Sconson to four locations. And over the course of the entire day. I mean, fighting in this area went on well into the evening, well past 9 p.m. The British suffered over half of the total casualties they suffered in the East Rising, perhaps over 220 men injured or killed in the vicinity of Mount Street Bridge. British troops have been given explicit orders that as they entered the city, if they encountered any resistance, they weren't to go around it, they were to go through it, they were to attempt to crush it. Um, and this led to a bloodbath on Northumberland Road and Mount Street. Now, Northumberland Road in particular is quite a leafy suburban street. And bear in mind, the volunteers would have been using weapons such as, you know, the famous Holt Mousers. Old weapons, but extremely loud weapons. You know, this would have been a very dis disorientating experience for these inexperienced troops. They only began to get the upper hand as reinforcements arrived after five o'clock. Um, Clan William House would have been burnt down and the three volunteers in it, well, apparently their bodies were never recovered. There is one particularly tragic story that emerges from the events in and around Northumberland Road and Mount Street. A British officer called Frederick Dietrichson, whose wife was Irish, had actually sent his wife and children back to Dublin from Nottinghamshire. Um, he was afraid they might be injured in Zeppelin raids, and he sent them back to Dublin to stay with her family. He was amongst the Sherwood Foresters to arrive in Dublin, and amongst the units that had been sent up towards Northumberland Road and Mount Street. Um, along the way, he encountered his wife and children, greeted them enthusiastically, and within a matter of hours he was dead. He was one of the first of those killed in Northumberland Road. Another victim of the fight in the Northumberland Road was the president of the IRFU, Frank Browning. Food or the lack of food was an issue in many volunteer positions throughout the city during the Easter Rising. Now, De Valera had set up his headquarters in Boland's Bakery rather than Boland's Mills, so his, the men on, under his command were reasonably well fed for the duration. The area around Boland's Bakery and Boland's Mills was one of the areas attacked by the gunboat Helga from the Liffey, which fired shells in the general direction of it. De Valera managed to get around this by instructing that a tricolour be placed on, a t on the tower of a building nearby, which then became a target, and therefore drew this fire away from him and his own positions. 